I noticed a pair of remarkable op-eds this week, one in the New York Times and the other in the Washington Post, and they weren't remarkable so much for what they said as where they said it. The WAPO one was titled, Why are white evangelicals embracing an anti-democratic movement? Because they're panicking. Uh, The other was a little more direct. It was called, The Christian Right is in Decline and it's Taking America with It. So both of them were written in response to a new survey from the Public Religion Research Institute called the 2020 Census of American Religion. And like pretty much all national surveys about religion in the past decade or two, it wasn't great news for the Christian right. Among its most significant findings was that evangelicals are now outnumbered by white mainline Protestants. In fact, the number of evangelicals has been plummeting. They they peaked back in 2006 when they represented 23% of the population, and now they represent about 14.5%. That's a loss of over 25 million people. Now, of course, running away from them doesn't necessarily mean running towards us. While nuns remain the largest religious demographic on the survey, those 25 million plus fleeing the evangelical churches are mostly pushing their chips over to the other side of the table rather than cashing out. They're joining mainline Protestant churches, which in demographic parlance basically means they're just going to less politically active congregations. And of course, in most ways, that's a good thing. It means that the assholes screaming about how gay rights are a violation of their religious freedom are losing clout. It means that appealing to voters' Christian prejudices is getting to be a less viable national strategy for politicians. And it means that the long-term trends are all in our favor. But it's not all good news, right? Because they're looking at the same numbers we are. The fact that so many people are going to so much trouble to enshrine stuff like I can still hate gay people if Jesus says so into law is precisely because they know they're on their way out of the inner circle. There was never a need to write this shit down in law books as long as it looked like they were always going to have a comfortable supermajority. But ever since the largest religious demographic shifted to doesn't give a shit, they've been in a desperate race to try to codify their bigotry while they still can The problem, of course, is that as good as the secular world was doing, we reached a certain point where we said, ah, finally, we've got this dangerous animal cornered. There's nowhere it can escape to now, so who's up for some lunch? In the wake of the religious terrorism that rung in the new millennium, we actually went on the war path a bit. You know, not just the atheist movement, but kind of everybody. We fought back against the dangers of religious extremism, but as soon as we got the beast cornered, we started arguing about what to do next. Some people thought it might be best to just, you know, tidy up that corner so our prey could live out their life comfortably there. Others figured maybe we should also trap ourselves in a corner so that it would be fair. But most people just threw their hands up in celebration and screamed, hooray, we did it. And then they went home. After all, some of the people they'd been on the hunt with were a bunch of assholes and they didn't want to associate with them any longer than they had to. In fact, so many people turned their backs on the hunt that when the beast started to fight its way out, most of them didn't even notice until it had elected a fucking president. How they walked so far off they couldn't even hear the screams of the people who stayed behind. And that's how we wound up here, a spot where evangelicals' power is on the rise at the same time that their numbers are on the wane. Look, you and I are fighting for a lot of good shit. We're fighting for reason and logic. We're fighting for education and science. We're fighting for civil rights and the best possible future for our children. But as noble as all of that is, it's never going to motivate us like fighting for God. The the, the best we can ever fight for is something that actually exists, but they can imagine shit far grander than reality so they can fight for things like eternity and the salvation of human souls. And sure, for a lot of them, that's all just bullshit to try to sell more heaven tickets, but for some of them, it's real. And that means when their loss looks inevitable, they can be more desperate than you and I could ever be. Don't get me wrong. Every time we see evidence that evangelicals are losing power, it's a reason to rejoice. It generally signals an improvement in the quality of life for pretty much every minority except evangelicals. But just as it makes them less dangerous as a collective, it makes them more dangerous as individuals. After all, we're talking about people who resorted to terrorism even when they were in power. And if they're not afraid to break this country when it's theirs, just imagine what they'll be willing to do when it isn't.